Hello everyone, Captain Kevin Zedai with Warrior Notes and welcome to this episode of Devil Busters. And this day we're gonna talk about your assignment of praying in your secret language, which is praying in the spirit. And uh, I'm looking right now at my book. Um, we're gonna talk out of this book, Prof Prophetic Made Easy. And uh, chapter four, I'm just gonna go over this real quickly with you about praying in the spirit. You know, um, a lot of us as Christians, when we first got saved, we didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a, a separate, uh, you know, uh, encounter with God. And um, I didn't know about it. I just knew that there was a Holy Spirit and I got saved. But I want to tell you, you know, that the devil fears when people get filled with the Spirit. And he even fears it more when you pray in the Spirit. And so Paul, uh, on many occasions, encouraged us all to pray in the Spirit and also to pray in the understanding. So I want to tell you a little bit about what that means. And I want you to give the devil a headache today. We're going to, we're going to break the power of the devil over your life. And, and part of that is building yourself up. So we know that in Jude 20, you know, it only has one chapter in it. And it's verse 20. It says that we build ourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit and remaining in the love of God. So that is very powerful because there's a couple things there. Um, you know, when I found out that there was another, another, uh, occurrence that the Spirit of God would give you another experience called baptism Holy Spirit I was all for it you know and this happened in the book of Acts too there was a time where uh, people had had uh, encountered the Apostles and the Apostles asked them have you received the Holy Spirit and they said no we did not know that there was a Holy Spirit to be to receive they said they had received uh, salvation through John they had received baptism but they did not know about that so immediately when they prayed for them they received the Holy Spirit began to speak in other tongues and so we know that that is the initial evidence of of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues and we see that multiple times almost 10 times in the Bible where people were not told but they received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues without being coached on it so um, looking at this uh, uh, you know, scripture in, in Jude 20, it, it really uh, says a lot. It says that we build ourselves up and that idea is the same as charging a battery. And also it causes our faith to grow and it also causes our love to grow as well. So that's a benefit there. But getting on into this, you know, Paul in, in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, he talks a lot about the gifts of spirit and he, he says that we should um, desire to prophesy and that that one which should be like the paramount or the highest one that we should desire um, anything that would uh, in, involve the whole congregation being uplifted or encouraged and built up so um, what does that mean well the, the, the misunderstanding today and the devil doesn't want anyone to understand this is that is that we have the initial evidence of speaking in tongues um, which occurs when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it says that we can pray in the Spirit. And, and Paul s clearly says this in chapter 14, verse 3. He says that he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. And it says that he who prays in an unknown tongue prays not to man, but to God. So we see that um, prophecy, you know, in the, in the understanding of that language of that that con particular congregation, you know, if you speak that language of the congregation, then everybody's edified. But if you speak in an unknown tongue, we know that we're speaking to God, according to Paul. Okay, so, it, it, so there is two th things going on here, and uh, we're going to get rid of that confusion today and really mess the devil up in your life. You know, you can pray in the Spirit on your own and edify yourself, building yourself up in the most holy of faith, and you also can uh, build, build yourself up and remain in the love of God as well. And that's your personal, uh, that's your personal time. And so you can pray in the Spirit. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. And so you, you should try to get into a race with him and see if you can pray more than him. That's what I do. I, I pray in tongues and I think, you know, I'm going to try to beat Paul. When I get to heaven, I'm going to find out if I put more time in praying in the spirit than he did, you know, and that's the way it should be. We should always be praying in the spirit, even if it's to ourselves. Um, you know, I pray silently. I can still hear myself praying in the spirit, even in my, in my side myself, I can hear my voice talking and praying in the spirit even if you can't hear me vocally around me. So you should be praying in the spirit all the time. The, the differ, 
the different um, uh, act of the Holy Spirit in a congregation is this, is that in the congregation, we have the gifts of the Spirit, which is the nine gifts of the Spirit. Now, those are given severally as the Spirit wills, according to Paul. So, you know, we all have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the initial evidence of speaking in tongues, according to the book of Acts. We see that uh, nine or ten times in the Bible where, where they received the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues without being told to. You know, so that was just the evidence that, that they had received the Holy Spirit. But however, in the congregation, he said there are nine gifts of the Spirit. One of them is the, the message of tongues and then the interpretation of tongues, which is, involves two different gifts of the nine. So in the congregation, he said, I want you to prophesy because that way you can, you can uh, say it in the language of the congregation and everybody's built up. And so we'll read that, that, that particular scripture just so that there is clarity in this. It says, uh, Paul says in uh, chapter 14, verses 6 through 13 from the Passion Trans Translation, says, My dear friends, what good is it if I come to you always speaking in tongues? But if I come with a clear revelation from God, or with an insight, or with a prophecy, or with a clear teaching, I can enrich you. Similarly, uh, if uh, musical instruments such as flutes or strings um, are out of tune and don't play the arrangement clearly, how will anyone recognize the melody? If the bugle uh, makes a garbled sound, or who will recognize the signal to show up for the battle? So it is with you, unless you speak in a language that's easily understood, how will anyone know what you're talking about? You might as well save your breath. I suppose that the world has all sorts of languages and each conveys meaning to the ones who speak it. But I am like a foreigner if I don't understand the language and the speaker will be like a foreigner to me. And that's what's happening among you. You are so passionate about embracing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit uh, now become even more passionate about the things that strengthen the entire church. So then, if you speak in a, at a tongue, pray that the interpretation uh, can be uh, come forth to be able to unfold the meaning of what you are saying. Okay, so here, here we have two different things happening. We have the congregation and we have tongues and interpretation of tongues, which is the operation of spirit in the body. Uh, in a congregation, and then we have uh, the you know the the prayer language, which you know Paul says in Romans eight twenty six. He says you know that we don't know when we should what we ought to pray for at times, and it says that but if we yield to the Spirit, he says the Spirit will pray for us and and pray with groanings and uh, and words that are not intelligible. In other words, they are in another language, and you can pray out the perfect will of God. And this will, he will be the standby. The Spirit will come in and strengthen you and pray out the perfect will of God. Well, that's a great deal. And so I want to encourage you to, uh, to pray in the Spirit often. And then ask the Lord if, if there is anything that you can understand from what you have prayed, that he will give that to you and he can speak that to you. There are times where I get all kinds of, of, of intuition, so to speak, uh, you know, maybe a direction or a nudge in a, in a direction that I was praying. And then there's times where it's just a mystery. Like Paul said, you know, when, a, when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're, you're not praying to man. You're not speaking to man. You're speaking to God. So um, in the congregation, though, I expect if I'm going to pray in the spirit that I'm going to get some something uh, that is interpretable, you know, so that I can encourage the whole congregation, unless we all agree to just pray in tongues, you know, and then we can all agree to pray in tongues as believers, of course, but then there's not going to be that interpretation. So um, I want to encourage you, if you really, really want to uh, uproot the devil and, and stop the devil from harassing you, just pray in the spirit and, and just, uh, you know, put yourself in a situation where you can't be in Interrupted, and just let let the Holy Spirit speak through you and pray out the perfect will of God. And then just go about your day and just say amen because you've just agreed to the perfect will of God. And so if you can do 10 minutes, do 10 minutes. But the, this is something that's going to continue on until the church uh, finds uh, herself in heaven. These gifts of the Spirit, all these things will continue to operate until Jesus comes back for us. And so I believe that you are going to completely uproot the devil devil's work, his schemes in your life. I believe that praying in the Spirit builds you up. You're going to be strong in your faith today. You're going to, you're going to let, um, uh, let the Holy Spirit uh, ignite you. 
show you some things about your day. He's going to preempt you. He's going to lead you and guide you. And the devil's not going to have anything to do with it. So I'm going to pray for you. I believe that God is going to move in your life. And, and this, is, this is the way it's going to be for you from now on. You're going to be in victory. You're going to see the devil leave town. So let's pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you so much for, for Jesus, his name, and the blood of Jesus. And I command every foul, lying devil, every familiar spirit, to go in Jesus' name. I command you all to leave go of God's children right now. I command every evil spirit to leave town now. Stop lying, stop cheating, stop stealing, stop killing, destroying in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that your resurrection power is rising up big in everyone who believes in your name. And I thank you, Lord, that this is a confidence we have, that you have come in the flesh and that you have given us your name. You've given us authority and we take authority right now in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord God, we're going to see a move of the spirit. We're going to see things come to pass that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Well, God bless you. Thanks for joining me. And just remember that everywhere you go, uh, God has given you authority and he has given you his name. He's given the blood and you can do this. We can do this together. Just remember that the devil fears those who have the word of God in their heart and that they use it in their mouth. God bless you. See you next time on Devil Busters. Bye-bye.